Okay, Sam Alikom and welcome back. So, so far we have seen uh, uh, the basics of JavaScript and we focused more on functions, on functional programming. Uh, today we will see the other side, the other style of programming, which is the very common object oriented programming and how to do this in JavaScript. So, this is the outline, this is what we try to achieve by the end of this session. First thing is how to create objects in JavaScript. We have three, th three ways you can do it. You can do it using what is known as a, an object literal. You just create an object on, on the fly using JSON notation. We've seen some examples earlier, but we will see further details. The other way to do it is you can do it the traditional way, which is you create a class first, then you instantiate the class and create objects out of it. The third way, which is quite unique to JavaScript compared to what you already know, you might have an object already and you can create other objects from an existing object. And the new objects will inherit the properties and the method of the original object. Now, this inheritance in JavaScript is enabled by something called the prototype. We will explain what this means and then we'll see when you build your uh, JavaScript application, you will not put your, all your code in one file. You will break it down into f multiple files or multiple modules. We will see how we create modules and how we use modules in JavaScript it's by using JSON notation. Um, so, first of all, we need to understand what is an object in JavaScript. So, in JavaScript, an object is same as in other um, in other languages. An object is a unit. Inside it, we'll have data and we have methods. So we put data and methods together under one unit and they become an object. Um, and as I explained, three ways you can create objects using JSON notation from a class or you can create an object based on another object. So I will show you these three ways of doing it and then we take it from there. So let's see the first way. This is the first way of creating an object. So what I do here, I, I declare a variable. This is the name of the variable, person. And then I open the curly braces and I start defining the properties and the methods of the object without any class, just on the fly. So what this is doing is, this is what JSON looks like. All you do is very simple data format. You, you provide the, the uh, property name, colon, and the value. Separated by comma, the property name, colon, and value, all separated by comma. Then it, the, the value could be any of the types that we already see. It could be a string, a number, or any other type. Or you could also define a method. The way you define a method is you give it a name without putting the keyword function. You just give it a name and put a parenthesis. If you have any parameters, put them here, and then define what the function is supposed to do. In here, what this function is doing, all it's doing is concatenating these two properties. And basically, to access these two properties, we use the keyword this. And this is exactly the same as you've seen in Java. In Java. Okay, so let me show you uh, very quickly here. So I can copy this, go to Chrome. I'll go to inspect, go to the console, and then I'll paste this here. So I have here a person object dot first name. I can also call the method that I had. You know, the console in Chrome, it, it gives me IntelliSense. It shows me what are the methods that are there. And I call another way, not very common way of accessing the object's properties is I can do person and I can do something like this. Because, because a really an object in a JavaScript is nothing but a map or a dictionary data structure. It has keys and values. What is the key? Is the name of the property. What is the value? Is the value assigned. But then, of course, the most common way of doing, of accessing properties is using the dot notation. This is the most common way. But there is alternative way, if you wish, using this. Uh, 
kind of a map because a really an object is nothing but a map. The key is a, is a unique string and the value could be anything. Value could be a string, a number, a function, whatever you want. Why would you use one over the other? Is there any? There are some advanced scenarios where you might want to use this one. This one, for example, uh, this one is dynamic. You ask the user which property you want to you want me to give you. Oh. They give you a string, and you can get it from this. This is very powerful. Okay, but usually when you you when you know what you're doing. What you are extracting is not dynamic. You use the dot notation. Dot notation is the most common way you will use this. Okay, so uh, the object literals using JSON, straightforward, very clear. Okay. Um, that's kind of another way of doing it. What I'm doing here, I'm creating an empty object, and then I'm adding, adding to it properties and methods. You know, you can notice here, objects are dynamic. It's not like Java, Java, where you create a class, you create an object, you cannot change the object. Yeah. In here, you can add properties to the object, you can, you can add functions to the object, you can also delete those if you don't need them anymore. So very, very powerful. So let me show you. Uh, so here... So I'll come here, uh, I'm creating a new object. This is the name. Now if I, this is all I know about the object, I just know, know the name. But now I know the age, I want to add the age. All I do, dot age equal 34, whatever. And I have a new property, age. So if I say here, joha dot age, it will give me, sorry. Because there was a mistake in there. The Joha edit will give me that. Now, not only this, I can also add a function. Inside the object. To the object. I can take a new function. Before I add it. Or let's, let me just add it. This is an anonymous function. No, it is a function that I assign to this property. Okay. So... Like it doesn't have a name. No, it has a name, which is to a string. Oh, okay. Yep. You see here, to a string. So I can, I can add a method and call it on the fly. This is very powerful. So the objects are dynamic. I can add properties. I can add method to them after I create them. No problem whatsoever. Even if I, I can come to, remember person? We just created short short while ago. This is person. Does it have age? It doesn't have age. I can add age to person. Dot age equal 18. Yes, sorry, just a second. Person, and there is a new property here called age. Yes, please. Can you add different properties? You added age, and you also added string, method, you added the function. Can you add an object to an object? Of course, of course. Uh, so here, uh, person dot brother equal joh. Yes, and then I can say here person. So person here it has first name, last name, and he also has a brother, and this is the details of the brother. Yes, you can compose objects on the fly, uh, no problem whatsoever. It's a possible no, this is the power of JavaScript. So dynamic, so uh, flexible uh, in the way you do things. But, but classes, are they... Classes are also extendable. There's Cla a extension about adding new variables and uh, parameters, basically, to the, to the object. Would it be as flexible as this way? Yes, yes. Also, classes are, are very flexible. Set, yeah, they are not static. Yeah, as I told you, JavaScript is a dynamic language. Dynamic means variables, you can change their type. Objects, you can add and remove properties and methods. Classes, you can add. You can even extend the built-in classes. You can add more functionality to them. There is no limit. It's really dynamic. Uh, there isn't anything static in this language. Anyway, constant, the value does not change. Yes, 
The value cannot change. The value cannot change. Yes. That is by design. That's what the definition of constant. Um, if they don't do it that way, it's not a constant. Okay. So, have a look at this. So, in here, I have two, two uh, simple variables, name and age. Now, let's say I want to put this together into an object. Very simple. All I do, I say here, let student equal name, comma, age. This will create a new object. And what's the name of the object? Student. And I get in this student these two, param these two properties that I add. So I, if I have some variables, I can just put very easily put them in cur between curly braces, comma delimited, and I, they become an object. Okay, let's move on. Uh, now, of course, you can get a property uh, using either the dot notation or, or like accessing a dictionary or a map. You can set using, using uh, dot notation. You can even delete if you no longer need, uh, if, you, if you no longer need something, you can delete it. So for example, here, I can say delete student dot age, okay? And then I'll say student only has a name. The age is gone. So you can even delete properties that you don't need. If you do it again, it will give you false, right? What do you mean? It will give you undefined. If you do student, ah, yes, yes. It doesn't matter what it gives me, but if I ask his age, it's undefined. The object no longer has. Okay, so... This is basically the JSON notation. This is a very important data format that is widely used in practice between system-to-system -system communication when I want to send an object to another system. Let's say I have a mobile application on the server side. I they can talk to each other using JSON format. So, so let's say... Okay, so let's say I have this... Per Remember, I have this person object. You see, this person object has, this is an object. Now, let's say I want to convert it to a string for me to be able to send it through the network, because I need, it needs to be converted to a string and then send it to the other side of the network. So what I can do here, I can just say here, there is a built-in object in JavaScript called JSON. That's an object in JavaScript. And what I can do to, what I can say here, I say, I call this uh, function called stringify. I'll give it an object, which is in this case person. And what it will give me? A string representation of that object. This is called serialization. I'm serializing an object in memory into a string. And I might send this one through the network to another system. Now, the other system, when they, when they get it, they will get it as a string. And now they need to deserialize it or parse it to, be, to come back as an object. So let's say, let's say I store this one here, let str, which is a string. If I do here lstr, it gives me a string. Now, if I want to bring it back to an object, all I do here, let person let's say two, equal the same built-in class in JavaScript called JSON, and this time I call the keyword, the method parse, I give it a string, what it will give me? An object, a J, an object, a JavaScript object. Now if I say person two, person two, this is the object, the string is now back to an object. And this is very important, it's widely used. Uh, so to serialize an object, I use JSON stringify, and to, to deserialize it, I use JSON.parse. Okay, one more thing. If you remember, we have array destructuring. Array destructuring, it is important to, uh, to know the terminology. Uh, here, I also have what is known as object destructuring. I might have an object, I want to extract some stuff from the object. So for one, 
and I want to do it in a nice, elegant way. I want to extract multiple things uh, from the object in one simple way, in one elegant way. So let me show you a small example here. Uh, okay, I'll go back here. And then I'll say, uh, remember here I have person. All right, so uh, let's say I want to extract the age and the first name. So here I'll say let first name age equal person. Oh, sorry. No, this one's supposed to be curly brace. Okay. Now, basically, what I did, these properties that match these properties on the object, I'll copy them from this object. I assign them to this, to these variables. Let's say I have a, a very large object, and I want to extract from it a couple of things. I can do it this way. Very elegant, very nice. So if I say age, it will give me 80. So this is called object destructuring. If you wish, you could also do object-oriented programming the classical way, the way you, are, you already used to do it, which is creating a class first, and then from the class, you can create instances of the object. Of course, the first method, if you already have the data, you don't need to create a class. Why waste time creating a class? Unless if you have so many uh, you need to create multiple instances and you need to repeat a lot of coding, then you might create a class. But if it is one off, you have the data already, you just want to put them together in one object, you just do it the way we have seen so far. So, but anyway, uh, to create a class, the syntax is very similar, it's very, very similar to, to Java, okay? So what you do is you have a keyword class followed by class name and please make sure it is uppercase this is just a convention that the class name starts with uppercase and then here you can define a constructor you already know what a constructor is what is a constructor what do we need it for uh, the initializing you can instantiate an object without a constructor so for initializing the object during the instantiation you have a, you can create a constructor. So this in in the JavaScript is very straightforward. The constructor is called constructor. No, no, it's not like Java, the name of the class. No, no, no. JavaScript just it is called constructor, and then it takes these parameters, and then here here what it's doing it's doing two birds one stone. It's creating two properties which is first name, last name, two new properties that belong to person, and also it assigns to them the values that you pass in from as parameters to the constructor, okay? Then, then you can, by the way, this first name and last name are accessible from outside. You don't need to have get and set. You don't need to. But if you wish, you could. You could do get and set, especially if you are doing more than just returning. For example, here, I am concatenating. So, for example, I'm creating a new property called first name. And then I'm concatenating these two guys and returning it. For set, for set, if I just want to set the last name, I don't need to go through set. I just say person one dot last name equal the value. But if, let's say here, some lazy person, they just want to give me the full name and I have to split it myself into first name, last name. Look at this, very, very elegant. All I'm doing, I take the full name, split it using the space. The first part will go to the first name and the last part will go to the last name, okay? Then in here, this is a method. This is a method, a greet, which I return this string. So basically, this is how I create a class. So in here, as you can see, I'm creating a class called student. It has two properties, name and age. I am creating a full name computed property that concatenates the name and the age. And I have a new method called say salam, and this is what it does. I'm doing it here bad way. This is not good. I should have I should have done this way. You can probably copy it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Like. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so here I have a class called student. Now I can start creating instances of this class. So I can say here let Ali equal new, the same syntax as Java, new student. And then Okay, so I created a new instance. If I say here Ali, all I am having here is a new property, uh, sorry, a new object of type student with these two properties, name and age. I can also call the method, say, say, salam. Of course, when I call a method, I always put the parentheses and it will say the greeting. Okay? Why did we put get success? Why don't we just define functions? You can, you can. Uh, so the difference is uh, name, uh, sorry, here, uh, Ali dot, what, what did we call it? Full name. Yes. The only difference, what is the difference? Can you spot the difference? No No, uh, no uh, parentheses or no brackets. Yes, that's the only difference. This is a computed property. Now, the other properties are accessible. There is no kind of, Java, in JavaScript, it doesn't respect the encapsulation. The properties are not hidden. The properties are exposed. So if I say here, Ali.age, it will give me the age. I can change the age. Ali.age. I can change. So the properties by the way, this get and set is very rare. You're absolutely right. Very, very rare developers use it. But just be aware of it. If you, especially the, the, a nice place where you, may, you, where you may want to use it, if you want a nice computed property that you want to access without having the parentheses. It looks like a real property. Otherwise, you can make it as a function, you call it, and you put the parentheses. Okay, that's the advantage of doing the get. When you do get, when you are doing the get, uh, basically um, you are not, that's what I want to, you typically use it for computed properties. When you do set, if you are doing some logic when you are setting, then you might use set, okay? But it's not, you're right, it's not very commonly used. All right. Okay, you can also have inheritance in JavaScript. So you might have a, a class and you can extend that class. So for example, here is my initial class, person. It has these nice properties and methods. Now, I have a student, which is, also, which is of course a person, but they have extra stuff like GPA, like program, which university, they have some extra things. So I can take the, I t the student can extend the person class. So do, to, the way to do that is very simple. All I do, I say class student extends, we using the keyword extends person. And then in the constructor, I am calling to refer to the, to the super class, I use the keyword super, this is similar to Java and I initialize the properties of the superclass, then I am creating a new property that is specific to the, to the student. So I'm extending the person with an extra property called JPA. Then in greeting, the same thing. In greeting, I'll say, I say my name is Kada and my JPA is this. So the greeting, I am inherit, like using the superclass behave and add in extra behavior. That's what really inheritance means. And then basically this, for example, when I say greeting, it will, it will call the superclass behave plus the uh, subclass behave. Okay, so let me show you this. So this is the class inheritance. This is the person. And this is the extension of person. And this is the way I'm using it. So let me just run this one. And you can see it's nicely doing it. This part is coming from the super class and this part is coming from the subclass. 
Okay, so inheritance is uh, nicely done. Okay, so, so far, how many ways we have seen how to create objects? Like object literals using JSON, class. or you create a class, then you instantiate the class. Okay, the second way of doing it is you create objects from other objects. You might have an object already, you have an object. What you do, you take that object and create copies of it. Not really copies. If you change the original object, you, let's say you add a new property to the original object, it's, it's the, it, the new object they inherit, and they keep the link with their kind of father object. Person dot? Person dot? Then person dot brother. No, no, that is not inheritance. That is not inheritance. That is just composition. Remember composition? I have an object and I can add to it more properties. This is different. It's very different. So I, I will, it will come uh, very shortly. So let me explain it quickly through, a not, through, a, through an, an example and then we take it from there. Let me just take this one. So here is the... Uh, here is an object, yes? So this is an object, cat. It has basically legs and eyes. Every cat, they have these properties. So I define them in this object called cat. And now I want to create my cat. I'm not creating a class cat. I'm creating an object cat. And from this one, I can create many copies. So I will stay here, let my cat equal object dot create and I'll say cat creating an object my cat based on the cat object now if I say cat dot eyes I will get two cat dot uh, legs I will get four although although the cat itself it does not have my cat does not have these properties. And the evidence is, when I say cat, sorry, when I say my cat, it says to me it's an empty object. So where is this eyes coming from? From the prototype. From the prototype, thank you very much. From the prototype. So what's happening is, my cat, what is the prototype of my cat? Cat. Cat. So when I say my cat dot eyes. What the what the Java runtime, JavaScript runtime will do? We'll check my cat and say, do you have the eyes property? If it. yes, it will use it. If it doesn't have, we'll it will check the prototype. Thank you very much. Basically, this is how you hide stuff. No, this is how you implement inheritance. So that's why we call it prototypal inheritance. So when I create an object based on another object, the new object we'll have a special property called the proto. In fact, you can see it here, have a look. JavaScript does not hide how it works inside. So the cat, which is the prototype, is set in a special object called underscore, underscore, proto, underscore, underscore. It's kind of a hidden object. And here is my properties. So here is the legs equal three, yes? So when I say my cat dot legs, Tell me what JavaScript runtime will do. Here, because now, because I define the property, it belongs to my, my cat now. So the my cat has its own property. It shadows the, the property from the prototype. So what I meant is, when I say my cat, I will get three. The reason why I get three is because now the object has its own property. It's not relying on the property but from the prototype. the prototype. Right? Of course, the prototype is unchanged. So, it still has to so if I change the prototype, the, pro the change is propagated to, oh, all the to all the objects. But if I change the object, it's only changed in that object only. So, sorry, let me just show this one. Can you think of some property that is applicable to all? To all? Uh, one tail. Yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. One. Yes? yes. Excellent. Yes. Now, if I say my cat dot tail, what? 
Okay. Now have a look. My cat dot name equal yes. Okay. So if I say here cat dot name, what will get? What I will get? And the fun. Very good. But if I say my cat dot name, I will get Garfield. So that's basically the pro what prototypal inheritance is really is. I can extend the prototype. The change is propagated to the uh, to the objects that were created based on the on this prototype. But if I change the object, that change is only on the objects on the objects only. Okay. So let me show you this graphically how it looks. So when I create an object, what is the every object in JavaScript it has a prototype. So now when I create an object cat, what is the prototype? By default, it is object.prototype. Now, when I create my cat, the prototype is cat, and the prototype of cat is object prototype. Now, if I call something here, like my cat.eyes, it will check. Do I have eyes? No. Let me check in the, uh, in the prototype. Do I have eyes? Yes. I will give it. Uh, let's say if we say here my cat.toString. It's not here, it's not here, it will find it here. It will run this one. So that's what, uh, we call this one prototype chain. So the inheritance hierarchy in JavaScript is implemented using this concept of prototype chain. 